Chop Barbershop on 10th Avenue in Great Falls celebrated its building's facelift by giving back to the community who helped rebuild it. Hosting a free event for the next two weekends, giving away $5,000 in gas and food gift card prizes. The event is sponsored, partnered by Town Squared Media. It's an all-around team effort. Even the Central Montana Radio Network was in attendance today for live promotion. The turnout was light, but that didn't stop the few who did come to play for a chance to win a $25 gift card. So this is our way of just kind of saying thank you to everyone. And we know gas prices are really crazy out there. So we thought, why not give away some money and gift cards and we'll support some other businesses this way as well. So there's no purchase necessary. Just come down and we're playing cornhole and you throw one in and you win instantly $25 gas gift card. So it couldn't be much easier. Um, just stop by and we have other gift cards and, and promotions to give away as well. And the gift cards range from businesses like Schulte's, Conoco, and Boston's Pizza while promoting neighboring businesses like Yogurt City and Daydream Boutique. You can show off your skills with the bags for a prize on June, July 30th and August 10th from 9 to 11 a.m. It's been five years since the Thunderbirds last performed at Great Falls, but the wait is finally over. With literally thousands of people in attendance, as well as various aerial demonstrations taking place, along with some static displays. Organizers expected up to 20,000 people to attend and enjoy the action. Um, I think it's pretty cool how they have the Blue Angels and stuff. They got all the planes. Yes, she get the job done. Yeah, the Ferrari that you can ride in and stuff, yeah. It was pretty kind of important this year with the 75th anniversary of the Air Force. And what's really neat about this air show, too, with the, it really highlights the jointness between the, the Guard and the active duty uh, within uh, Great Falls and Montana. The event also attracted some special guests, showing appreciation and support for our military amidst the 75th anniversary of the U.S. Air Force. Well, I think this is an amazing opportunity for the the civilians to see uh, some amazing equipment, the infrastructure to support the equipment, and the great people that work for the military that uh, operate the equipment. So it's a uh, it's it's not something that happens every day. The last time I think they had an air show here in Great Falls was in 17. So it's been a while, and I anticipate there will be a huge turnout today. But I was here in 47 when the unit started, and and there's just nobody left from that period. No. Main thing is I'm just so proud to be part of all this. One of the more popular attractions was the Top Gun experience. This F-A-18 Hornet is designed to create memorable and unique experiences. We allow visitors that once in a lifetime opportunity to get inside an authentic, historical fighter jet and for one moment just experience what it must be like to be a fighter pilot. But the draw of the event was to capture the skills and capabilities these aircraft possess. Just a glimpse of what our military air power Captain is Kelly all about. Lynch, thank you so much. If you happen to miss today's flight over the falls, the event will continue through tomorrow with gates opening at 9 a.m. We will also continue our coverage on Sunday and show you some additional demonstrations. In Great Falls, Cade Metford, MTN News. We saw a couple of isolated showers and storms along the High Line this evening. As we head towards tomorrow, we'll see a round of showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon and evening. That'll be a little further to the south, actually to the south of Great Falls. A few of those could clip us here in the Electric City. And we still have a couple of chances for some isolated showers and storms for both Monday and Tuesday. We're also going to see cooler temperatures, the coolest we've seen in a few weeks. We are going to be seeing highs in the upper 70s and low 80s for Monday and Tuesday. But beyond that, we are going to be getting progressively warmer, eventually getting back into the mid 90s by the end of the week. As for tonight, not too bad, a little mild up in Fort Benton 59 tonight, 55 over in Chester. We'll see clear to mostly clear skies. Any of those showers and storms still along the high line should begin to wind down over the next couple of hours. Now tomorrow is going to be a warmer day, upper 80s and low 90s, a little cooler where you see some of those showers and storms. But the first half of the day is going to be mostly sunny. We'll see increasing clouds and showers and storms breaking out throughout the afternoon. One Billings man is kissing the century mark, and his age hasn't stopped him from shooting pool. And he doesn't look like he'll be slowing down anytime soon. MTN's Phil Van Pelt has his story. People praise Tom Brady for being one of the best in the NFL at age 44. Well, we have a guy here in Billings that's still going strong at his sport of choice and even competing in the Big Sky State Games at 97.
and 97 years old, Bill Luscombe has pretty much figured out what he likes and what he doesn't. So it's no surprise this is how he spends most of his time. That's just about all my life is pool. Luscombe has been playing pool more than five days a week for 50 years and is a staple in pool halls around Billings, playing in multiple leagues every year. Company, something to do. That commitment has helped Luscombe forge an historic career, and he's still racking up the wins. On Saturday, he and his partner took third place in the billiards competition at the Big Sky State Games. It wasn't a real big division. I think there were eight teams in it, I think, eight or nine. So it wasn't a real big division, but everybody was, it was competitive. They Bill played well to win that medal, and so did his partner. They wouldn't have played well, they wouldn't have won it. Doug Oslison runs the event and is impressed as anyone by what Bill's managed to do, having followed his billiards career for years. There's two awards that he received that were high honors. Uh, back, I don't know the, the year, but back we had a doubles league. He was inducted into the Hall of Fame, which was a real high honor. And he was a young guy then. He was like in his 70s. But for Bill, it's not about the awards. This former semi-truck driver remains humble and plays for the love of the game and the camaraderie. To me, it's pretty important because I don't have, I don't have many people to hang around with. And to say he's impressed those around him would be an understatement. It astounds me the shots he makes, and you know when you're when you're 97, usually your vision vision isn't real good, and to make those shots that he makes, you have to have good vision. You have to see the ball, you have to know where to hit it exactly, and he does. A billiards player still as sharp as the day he started. Even now at the age of 97. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. This brain injury is an invisible injury, so a lot of times people just don't know about it. Um, so the hikes are a great way to get that out there. The Big Sky Challenge hike held its first fundraising hike in Kalispell to support the Brain Injury Alliance of Montana. The Brain Injury Alliance is a statewide nonprofit that is dedicated to prevention, advocacy, and support for brain injury survivors. And we have a really active support group in um, Kalispell as well called Coffee with Survivors. And so it w we just thought it'd be super fun to get all of those folks. They're all hiking today, actually. Um, just sort of getting those folks out, getting engaged with that specific brain injury community. Some of the hike participants were survivors and families of survivors, while others were hiking in remembrance of people lost to brain injuries. There were also some people who wanted to come out to support the cause. Well, it's positive. Um, it's positive because it can often be an internal family matter that's just kept at home. So to have uh, a situation where you can go and walk out and just be amongst various people um, and you can just all be together and kind of do something simple in a beautiful setting um, whilst, you know, creating benefit. Ewan Morrison suffered a brain injury in 2017 from lack of oxygen after a cardiac arrest. Him and his family hiked together to help inform his children about the effects a tragedy can have on a family and how to support others. So since then has been, I've just been learning to manage that. You learn an awful lot of things that you really had no clue about. Um, and you also learn that a lot of people have desperately worse situations going on. And I think things that can make them feel less human than, than they used to. If you missed this year's Big Sky Challenge hike and would like to donate to the program or find resources for a brain injury, you can visit the Brain Injury Alliance website. A little known fact is that Montana bounces between second and third in the nation for brain injury deaths per capita, and about 45,000 Montanans are living with brain injuries. So Montanans, we like to say, you know, we work hard and we play hard, and so it's really, really important to educate people, you know, wear your helmet, wear your seatbelt. Outreach like that can really save lives. Um, and can prevent tragedy. In Kalispell, Kiana Wilson, MTN News. Well, folks will be hitting the beach and lake and the rivers to beat the heat. One organization is doing their best in protecting marine mammals. Find out more after the break. Download your free KXLH News app and take MTN News with you. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. DAV helps veterans and their families get the benefits they've earned. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. Closed captioning is sponsored by Comprehensive Hearing Services. Life is full of the unexpected. So when you want to know what you can expect, Benefice is here. 
At Benefice Helena Northeast, you can count on expert urgent care from a trusted source. We provide convenient, comprehensive care through online scheduling and access to the largest health system in North Central Montana. So next time the unexpected happens, expect world-class health care from Benefice. Learn more at Benefice.org slash Helena. dealership alternative because I don't like traditional car dealerships. It was so low pressure. We kind of knew what we were looking for and John found it, the exact car that we wanted. The satisfaction of seeing people smile and thankful for what we do for them is truly a blessing for me. Former Staff Sergeant, the United States Air Force. Sergeant, United States Marine Corps. Petty Officer First Class, United States Navy. Proud to support my husband, Sean. Retired Master Sergeant, U.S. Army Special Forces. To all of our veterans, we stand behind you and acknowledge the sacrifices that you have made. At Scripps, we strive to be an employer of choice for reservists, transitioning veterans, and their families by offering programs for transferable skills. See where Scripps can take you. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Welcome back. This weekend, millions of us will be heading to oceans, lakes, and rivers in search of some relief from the heat. And marine life sightings can be one of the unexpected thrills of those trips. But what happens if we encounter a sick or injured animal? NOAA works with more than 100 organizations across the country to respond to those calls for help. CBS News' Michael George recently saw firsthand how that process works and even watched the release of some healthy seals. During a recent trip to a wildlife rehab center on New York's Long Island, we met Willow, a seven-month-old gray seal pup. She's adorable. I see her looking right at us, and she's got these puppy dog eyes. Yeah, yeah seals are really like dogs. Um, we, you know, we call these guys kind of like the German Shepherd. They have that longer snout. But Willow hasn't had an easy life. In May, she was struck by a boat, leaving her with a fractured shoulder and deep cuts on her back. We don't want anything to happen to these guys. Maxine Montello and her team at the New York Marine Rescue Center have spent weeks rehabilitating Willow, along with Cedar, a male seal who was found with a badly infected flipper. These guys can be a handful. Very oh, much yes. so. Yes. Volunteers Lenore McGinn and Lorraine Mishagno are helping nurse Willow and Cedar back to health. Cedar is a chunky monkey. He's cute, he comes up, he looks at you, he wants more food constantly. Willow's kind of quiet. The seals all definitely have their own personalities. Unfortunately, more animals are ending up at the rescue center, and too often, we're to blame. Boats, abandoned fishing gear, and pollution are leading to injuries for seals and sea turtles. One of the biggest threats, the garbage we leave when we go to the beach. We see the entanglements. You know, with the plastic bags and the plastic in the waters. They wind up in the ocean, and then the animals unfortunately suffer because they eat them thinking they're food. Another growing problem, harassment. People want to get close. They want to get that selfie. Um, they want to touch that animal. If you do see them, enjoy from afar. And even well-intentioned people who think they're helping can make things worse. After Willow was injured, a good Samaritan picked her up and put her in his truck to drive her to a vet. He wasn't trying to hurt this animal, but picking these animals up is illegal. They're federally protected under the Marine Mammal Protection Act. It's easy to forget Willow and Cedar are still wild animals. If you're at the beach and you see a beached or injured animal, marine wildlife experts suggest calling the nearest rescue center. I will let you know when I'm like 10 minutes away. As we were shooting our interview, a bystander did just that calling to report a badly injured sea turtle. A little better. Thanks to that call, the team was able to save it. This is a uh, Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, so they're one of the most critically endangered sea turtles, so we really appreciate you guys calling. Willow and Cedar are healing nicely, and they've both put on 30 pounds. Now, Maxine says, it's time for them to go home. 
You ready? Yep. One, two, three. The pair had their final checkup. They got weighed. 38 two. Swabbed to check for diseases. And had their blood drawn. Going in. After starting the summer in a rehab facility, it was time to return to the wild. Cedar went first and seemed all too grateful to be back in the water. But Willow was nervous. For a moment, it seemed like she wouldn't go. But eventually... That moment when they went back into the water, is that what this is all about for you? Yeah, this is the best part of the job. All our hard work paid off. It's our goal to put them back into the wild to return them home. Michael George, CBS News, New York. Now the big takeaway here is that we share our beaches, rivers, lakes and streams with these animals, not necessarily seals, but other marine life. If we love them, that means that we have to resist the urge to get that great photo and keep our distance. The Marine Mammal Protection Act recommends that we stay at least 150 feet away. Moving now, a typical work week is 9 to 5 Monday through Friday, but a large study in the UK is exploring a different way to bring home the bacon. CBS's Ian Lee reports from London. Taking care of business means working five days a week, or so we thought. The UK has launched the world's largest four-day work week experiment. We're trying to be more productive and more creative in a shorter time, time span, and then get more rest. Mobile game developer Hutch is one of 73 companies participating. For Sean Rutland, the idea makes sense. Hiring talent is really hard, and you have to offer an attractive work environment. But fewer days doesn't mean less work. So you have to work extremely, extremely hard and extremely compressed. So, and I think investors need to hear that. Workers get 100% pay for fewer days, but have to maintain full productivity. I struggle at times to you know, get on top of everything, stay on top of everything. Still, that extra day off is kind of nice. Oh, it's been wonderful. You know, I've, uh, I've managed to go and do a lot um, of extracurricular activities. Nonprofit Four Day Week Global is spearheading the six month study that involves roughly 3,500 workers. If it's done right, this is something that can deliver very significant benefits for both the employer and the employee. This can be a win win. Is this something for everyone? This is not a one size fits all approach, but some version of the shorter work week can be achieved right across the economy. To compete with them. Rutland says he won't hesitate to switch back if productivity slips but sees four-day work weeks as the future. I don't have much control about what the government does, but I do have control about what this business does and what this business can contribute to society. If everybody is working toward the weekend, someday we all might have fewer days to go. Ian Lee, CBS News, London. 60 companies here in the U.S. have also signed up for the four-day work week trial. Researchers from Boston College are monitoring the experiment and say employees are reporting less stress and burnout and better physical and mental health. There will be some scattered